Hi everyone! So today I'm going to be going over my appointment with the Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome Specialist and kind of explaining why I was diagnosed with classical Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and what she kind of looked for to diagnose me with this. So my appointment was actually over telehealth. It was supposed to be in person, but because of the pandemic going on right now, obviously could not have an appointment in person, but she was still able to diagnose me because it's pretty obvious that I have EDS, but I just wanted to kind of go over and explain to you guys how I was officially diagnosed. Basically, she started out from conception through now, all of my health history. So I explained any weird thing I've ever experienced. Um, I mean, literally anything I could think of, such as having a weird red dot on my hand, which she was able to explain what that is and how it's related to EDS. It was kind of insane. I'm kind of going to explain head to toe what we went over and how I was officially diagnosed. One of the main symptoms, especially of classical, is skin hyperextensibility. So she wanted to see how stretchy my skin was. So obviously, if I grab here, you guys can see my skin is very stretchy. You can grab a lot of my skin and it just kind of stretches, as you can see. Even when it's bent, it stretches. So I have very, very, very stretchy skin, as you can see. With my neck, she said, because it extends past my ear, which I can't do it very well right now, but since it extends past my ear, that is hyperextensibility, especially with my jaw. You shouldn't be able to grab your skin like this. Which also, if you have stretchy skin, that doesn't automatically mean you have EDS. It's just something that comes along with EDS. Even, you know, the skin on my hands are, is really stretchy. All over my body, I guess. Um, so, it's kind of hard to, as you can see. She also wanted to go over hypermobility, so she kind of went through the Baton scale. So, I'll make a video um, going over the 2017 category for being diagnosed with hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, but that's in a different video. So, the Baton scale is basically measuring how hypermobile you are and so there's nine points and you get one point for each pinky that you can bend past 90 degrees so i had two points right there and then the next part is if your elbows bend more than 10 degrees if you guys can see uh, my elbow is like literally backwards so that's one point and then one point for the other. This one's not as bad, but it still does bend backwards. Then two points for your knees being hypermobile and bending backwards. I don't think you guys are gonna be able to see, but I can try to set up my camera here. I don't know if you guys can tell. It's really hard to see with jeans on, but my knees bend backwards. So, I also got two points there, and then a next point that I got is if I can touch with my legs straight, if I can touch the ground, palms to the ground, which I can do. And then two points that I cannot do because I have extremely terrible wrists, but most people with EDS can take their thumbs and they can bend it all the way back to their arms. I cannot do that just because my wrists are awful. So I scored a seven out of nine on the Baton scale, which means that I pass that criteria. So I am hypermobile and I do have skin hyperextensibility. So she also took a look at my mouth. She was like, can you bend your tongue sideways and I was like yes and she was like can you bend it more than sideways and I was like yeah actually my tongue goes upside down so if you see that that means that my tongue is hypermobile and so I can also flip my tongue backwards to touch my soft palate that's also hypermobile also if you can touch the tip of your tongue to your nose, which I actually cannot do, but that doesn't mean that my tongue is not hypermobile. Just so you know, 
if you can do these things or if you're hypermobile, still also does not mean you have EDS, so don't freak out. It just means that you are hypermobile, which is fine. It's abnormal, but it's nothing to be worried about. Unless it's causing injury, then go see a doctor. I also have gingival recession, which I didn't know I had, but apparently I do. So that's also apparently a sign of EDS. Didn't know that. This is a really awkward photo, but as you can see, I have a high palate and had severe overcrowding before I had braces. I actually had to have a bunch of teeth removed before I could even get braces. So these are both criteria for being diagnosed with EDS. I also have hypermobile thumbs. So as you can see, my thumbs kind of just like scoot over there. You know, they're, I can basically push them so far that they can stick out from the other side which means they're hypermobile. She also wanted to look at the stability of my knuckles. So if you look, I can just like completely move my knuckles. Like they, they just collapse. It's kind of hard to see on camera, I guess, but they're extremely unstable. Same with my wrists, my knees, my shoulders, my neck. All of my joints are hypermobile, but they're also unstable, which is not a good combination. So she also wanted to test the hypermobility of my shoulders. So she asked me if I can put my arm behind my back and then connect my arms. So this means that my shoulders are hypermobile. And then she also asked if I can do the reverse prayer. So as you can see, I can easily do the reverse prayer and put my arms and link my hands behind my back. So that means that my shoulders are also unstable and hypermobile. Another sign of EDS is if you put your fingers around your wrist, if your ring finger is able to overlap your thumbs, that also shows hypermobility in your fingers. So she also commented how on my knees, which I have jeans on right now, but there's excess skin and it wrinkles without compression. So that kind of shows like how stretchy and how much extra skin I have on my knees, which is also a sign of classical EDS. Funny enough, which kind of stumped her, I have piezogenic papples in my heels. They're basically little clumps in your heels that are typically seen in hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is why she was trying to decide if I had hypermobile or classical EDS, but she was thinking that I could have both possibly or just properties of both, but she said it's more likely that I have classical Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. So we will confirm that with testing. I have genetic testing coming up in September, which will officially tell me what type of EDS I have. Another thing she looked at is if I have subcutaneous spheroids and pseudotumors. So basically, they're kind of like hard cyst-like nodules that move um, above the bony prominences of your arms and your legs. So this bone and then my shin bones are basically really bumpy. And the way she explained it is basically I hit those areas a lot because they stick out. And so what happens because I have defective collagen, it's basically just clumps of star scar tissue that didn't go away after the injury. So another sign of EDS or MCAS is dermatographism, which is another thing that you can have without EDS, but it comes along with EDS. So I'm just going to simply scratch my arm right here and we'll come back to it and I will show you what my skin does because it freaks out. Speaking of skin, another very, very common symptom of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is having very soft and velvety skin. So my skin all over my body is extremely soft, which is kind of the nice things about EDS is it keeps you looking really young, but I also have widened scars and keloid scars, which is a sign of classical Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. So my skin is especially fragile, so my skin can cut or tear, bruise, scar at the simplest things. So we'll come back. If you guys see, it's been a couple of minutes now. It's kind of hard to see right now. There's a couple lines right here. So that's from me scratching my skin and that, these scratch marks are gonna stay there for about 45 minutes. Like they, 
after I simply scratch myself, my skin gets inflamed and irritated at the slightest touch. So that's kind of an example. That's called dermatographism, and I can't really see it on the camera right now, but I hope you guys can. Okay, so that clearly did not work, but here are two other examples of dermatographism on my legs. She also commented on my nails, how they're very brittle. My hair is also very brittle, which is a sign that I do have MCAS, which is mast cell activation syndrome. Still getting tested for that, but I will keep everyone updated if I get diagnosed with that as well, because it is a common comorbidity with EDS. She also commented on my flushing and my rosacea, which I put makeup on, so you guys probably can't see it very well, but you can see my cheeks are still even underneath my makeup are a little bit red. They're constantly red. Um, I always say that I'm constantly looking embarrassed, but it's rosacea. Um, that's possibly a sign of MCAS or EDS. And one other thing that we talked about is that I have Raynaud's phenomenon, which is where whenever my fingers or my toes are cold, they will turn white. Basically looks like I'm dead. So um, I'll probably make another video related to that, but right now they're normal color, but if they're cold from like here to here, we'll just be white. So, and same with my toes. But obviously, I'm not going to go into literally everything that we went over because my appointment was six hours long. I have a lot of things to talk about because I have a lot of things wrong with me. Anyways, I didn't want to go into crazy detail about how I was diagnosed, but this is just kind of an overview of why I was diagnosed with classical Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. In another video, I will go over the criteria for getting diagnosed with hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. But for now, I am losing sunlight, so I'm sure my camera looks extra bad, so I'm gonna go, but I will see you guys next time. Bye!